Hello there and welcome to the channel. My name's Keith Mason and I'm here on holiday. Uh, I'm here in St Ives and having a fantastic time. In this video I'm going to take a single camera body, a single lens and take it out onto the streets of uh, St Ives in Cornwall. It's the middle of August, it's a hot day, there's thousands of people here in the uh, town and see what pictures I can get. The body I'm using is a Fujifilm X-T20 and the, uh, the lens is the uh, Fujifilm 27mm 2.8 pancake lens, really small. And the, I'm going to use a single film simulation, uh, Velvia, which I think is going to suit the, uh, the colourful bright lights uh, and colour here in the town uh, at, the time, at the moment. And um, I'm shooting just the JPEGs, so the pictures that I'm going to get are all going to be sort of bright, colourful uh, pictures. What I'm trying to do is tell a story of the um, of my day here in St Ives. It's the middle of the day, I'm just about to go out, it's hot, I'm looking for light and colour and uh, detail uh, and interesting things and hopefully I can tell a story um, by doing that. I've done this once before. I took the same body and uh, lens down to London uh, just at the end of the first lockdown uh, 18 months ago and uh, shot exclusively in monochrome with a, uh, with a red filter to, to emphasise the blues. Uh, and it was really a tale of um, sort of isolation and uh, sort of separation because people weren't um, sure how to uh, react to being once again able to, to travel and move around. Today that's not the case. People are moving around freely, uh, families are together here on holiday uh, and it's just a, a brilliant time to, to be out and taking some street photography. So uh, let's jump into it. So what I'm trying to do is look for two things. One, which is using um, play with light and shadow because we're in the sort of middle of the day. The, the sun is really bright, so that's going to be creating lines and shadows. The other thing is setting up for sort of street photography. There's lots and lots of little vignettes and stories you can tell uh, by just looking at small um, small activities that are going on in the day. So I'm going to try and capture a few of those. And the other thing is just looking for details. And that's particularly the case, as I said, with using light and shade. Look at all this fantasticness going on. Um, down there, the, the surf house newly built. And you just see the turquoise and greens and teals of this fantastic, fantastic location. Um, people say that St Ives has got the sort of most incredible light and I it just uh, astounds me every time I come. So I was trying to capture the, the colours and the intensity of the feeling and the light um, in the first few pictures. I then captured a little vignette which uh, uh, was a man walking his dog and stopping for uh, coffee. And then um, I focused a little bit on some of the, the transport. Um, <laughs> there's a couple of really fantastic um, scooters um, dotted around and I see them parked in St Ives and I wanted to capture one of those. It's a sort of mod Lambretta type uh, and also um, a, a single sole um, camper van that was parked on the, the front. I then went and shot in the Benoon um, Cemetery and again um, here I'm using um, a, a very narrow depth of field to um, try and emphasise the relationship of somebody um, sitting in the um, cemetery and perhaps grieving of uh, lost ones. I went and found Alfred Wallace's um, grave. Uh, he's a very famous um, a novice painter discovered by I think Peter Lanyon uh, artist 
and um, was sort of drawn out of poverty, became very famous for a while and ended up back in poverty. So I'm down by the Tate, actually I'm right behind the Tate Gallery um, here in St Ives and I've just had a really interesting experience. Yesterday I saw a large green golf umbrella and a man sitting under that uh, on a bench, uh, what I thought listening to uh, the cricket and everything else was going on in the world and I didn't think very much about it but I thought uh, it's sort of quite if different for all the other holiday makers here. And when I came down this morning I saw the same umbrella uh, and a blue uh, co-op bag and it was beautifully um, silhouetted against a beautiful white um, wall and then some beautiful blue skies behind it. So I bent down, um, took a, a picture and a bloke came rushing up and he goes, what are you doing? What are you doing? I was like, well, I'm a photographer, I'm taking pictures. And he goes, well, well why, why are you taking that? I'm like, well, I'm trying to tell a story of, of um, sort of my trip through St Ives. And it turned out that it was his stuff. He was actually a safety guy from the bus company who spent time making sure that the bus could turn around in, outside the Tate safely uh, uh, because it's a very tight turning circle there and that people weren't getting run over uh, and then retreating under the shade of his umbrella um, until the next bus came. And we had a long conversation, his name's Harvey, and uh, he said, look, it's just, you know, I can tell you're a genuine guy, but I really don't want um, people taking pictures and without permission, uh, them coming public. So with that in mind, it was sort of really got me thinking uh, about how, um, about permission when you're doing street photography. And it got me thinking about even if he would never see his picture in the public domain, uh, not a picture of him, but his, of his possessions, how that might be. So it's an interesting conversation and uh, maybe one we can have a little bit more uh, thought about. I'm certainly going to think about it a lot more than I have done uh, up until now. Um, and I'd like to know how uh, any of you approach street photography. Do you ask permission from people or do you just jump in and grab pictures? Um, Obviously there's a difference between where people are uh, identifiable and not. And clearly he felt very uh, strong possession uh, about his own possessions. So, not going to include the picture, but it's something uh, I thought would be interesting to include. I then went into the, um, into the Tate Gallery and uh, its entranceway I still find is fantastic. This is an image taken through the windows of the, the cafe. It's four vertical images stitched together. Picking up on the idea of whether you should or shouldn't include people uh, in your street photography, here I've taken uh, what I thought was quite a nice picture of uh, a couple of small kids uh, bored. They've been dragged away from the beach to go and look at um, paintings. I then walked along the down along, um, looking at uh, doorways and entrances and went round the corner to where um, Alfred Wallace worked and was discovered by Peter Lanyon, which is in this uh, house um, with the grey door. Uh, very small, very simple. I then found this, uh, there's a little garden uh, just nearby and uh, I was affected by this um, sign that was out which suggests that this fantastic little peaceful place uh, is ruined and wrecked by people dumping stuff.
as you can see the um, the sea was so clear uh, you could see the shadows of the boats in the harbour. I was then conflicted about how I might um, represent people and how busy the, the town is and uh, you've got a picture here of uh, the thousands of people walking down 4th Street and people taken from behind uh, on the harbour wall looking over and that's what I think most people who visit the town tend to do or they can go to the beach. I also went up one of the um, uh, alleyways and uh, set up for a, a street photograph. I then returned, rather than taking pictures of people, trying to reflect how those people impact the town. And so I took pictures of drying wetsuits and drying towels. At the end of the day, I went uh, to Porthmere and, and looked over the, uh, the sunset and uh, sort of tried to um, take pictures of people uh, enjoying the sunset and um, uh, I, I used a, a very simple technique creating a sil silhouette to look at this couple uh, watching the sunset and, uh, and then finished the evening by um, um, looking at uh, people on the beach setting, uh, setting a fire which they can keep warm by, not that it was particularly cold um, before returning home. So uh, that's the end of my day shooting with the X-T20 and the 27mm pancake lens. Shooting exclusively on Velvia, um, some of which I think the pictures probably are going to be a little bit too saturated, a little bit too contrasty for what I would normally uh, pick to uh, edit them. But uh, in the true tradition of this uh, challenge, which I'm setting one uh, body, one lens, uh, one film simulation, that's what I've got. If you've enjoyed this film, please give it a thumbs up. Um, please consider subscribing. It makes a big difference to the channel. Uh, and I'd like to thank you very much for uh, watching and uh, hope to see you on the next one. Bye for now.